Dear friends, we want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom for a very special Shabbat as this week we will be reading the Torah portion of Kitisa, but as well we'll have the additional Torah reading of Parshat Para, which Parshat Para is one of the four special portions, the third of the fourth that we read during the month of Adar, talking about the red heifer and purifying every person who had come in contact with the impurity of death and bring life back to everyone. A very, very special message. I want to focus today uh, on Kitisa, on our Torah portion, which is the main part, which the main part of our Torah portion talks about the sin of the golden calf. Now, there's a lot to talk about the sin of the golden calf, how it is that the Jewish people, 40 days after they witnessed the great revelation of God speaking to them at Mount Sinai, they bowed down to golden calf. I think what's more fascinating is how Moshe so readily and quickly took upon himself to ask God for forgiveness for the Jewish people, though he saw in the fashion and the way that they turned their back on God, incredible leadership, incredible love that he had for his fellow Jews. And that alone is a lesson for itself of the type of love that you need to have. Moses was the man of the book. He gave us the Torah. He loved the message, the Torah. But more than the Torah, he loved the Jewish people. Because he knew that God loves the Jewish people. And though we had sinned against the Torah, he was protecting us in front of God and advocating on our behalf. And one of the fascinating things that happened was that after he had sort of gotten God to agree he will forgive the Jewish people, Amisha saw that he finally was able to see God in a different light or see a much deeper dimension of God. Moshe wanted to take advantage and sort of learn more about God. God, tell me, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Tell me a little bit more of how you work, how you operate. And God told him, Moshe, I want to tell you that behold, there's a place with me. I'm telling you what the verse says. Behold, there is a place with me and you shall stand on the rock. And then God says that when my glory passes, I will place you into the cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you'll see my back, but my face shall not be seen. I just read you three verses of this week's Torah portion. So basically God says, Moshe said, show me your face. I want to see how you operate. I want to see what drives you. I want to see you, what motivates you. Why do you decide to forgive the Jews now? Why do you decide to punish at different times? How do you work? So Hashem said, I'll put you on a rock. But as I pass by, I'm going to hide you into a cleft, a little hole in the rock, and I'll block your face. You won't be able to see anything. But when I leave, you'll see my back, but not my face. And that's as much as I will let you see. So it's beautiful words. What does it really mean? And what God is telling Moshe is that a human being can never fully see God's face. Obviously, we're not talking about physical. God's not physical. We can never see what's really going on in God, how God really operates. Just like we look at a human in their face, you can read between the lines and their expressions. You understand what's driving them. You can read into them what's happening. Hashem said a person cannot see God's face, cannot understand how God operates. God is way beyond anything we can ever comprehend or understand. And I'll tell you the secret, God says, that very often when I pass by, you feel like you're in a cleft in the rock, in a hole in the rock, you're tight in the rock, and, and, and my hand is covering it, you see nothing. Very often when things happen in life, and I'm there passing by, you feel as if you are disadvantaged. You feel as if terrible things are happening to you. You feel like you're stuck in a rock and you can't see any light at the end of the tunnel. So God says you should know that at some point, when I pass by, I will take you out of the rock. I'll take my hand off. And then what will you see? You'll see my back. What does it mean you'll see my back? You know the saying, in hindsight, we can see 2020. We all have 2020 vision when we look back. We just finished Purim. 
That's what Purim is about. When we looked at the story after it happened, we see the hand of God in every moment. So God says, after an event happens and you look back, very often you can start seeing the picture of what's really happening. You can see from the back, from afterwards, how God's hand. But while it was happening, you thought maybe God abandoned you. You thought you, 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 your face was covered because there is no God. There is, but really God said, I put you there. My hand is, is, is blocking you. I am with you. And this is the lesson for us at all times, and especially during this time. We're a year into the pandemic. Thank God the vaccines are coming. People are feeling more calm. It's going to help more, inoculate more people. But... We must remember that whatever we experience during this hardship we have now, or anyone in their particular lives, or in any time in our life, when we think that we're stuck in a, in a rock, between a rock and a hard place, and we can't see any light at the end of the tunnel, that's God putting us there and covering our face, because He has a plan. And perhaps if we're lucky, like Moshe was, He can see the plan from the back. In hindsight, He's able to see the plan. Sometimes we don't see the plan. You have to have a merit to see the plan afterwards. But there is always a plan. God never abandons us. And that's the message God wanted to tell Moshe. That even if you don't understand what's going on, never think for a moment, I abandoned you and I left you out in the cold. I look out for you. I'm with you every moment. I plan everything for you. I'm watching you. And I'm watching you grow. And I gave you all the potential you need to become great. Great for who you are and therefore great for the world. So that's the greatest blessing that we can get from God. And God loves every one of us. God loves you. God bless you. We love you all. We bless you. We should bless each other all the time, like Moses who cares more for the Jews and for each other than anything else. May we have a beautiful Shabbat Shalom and a great rest of the month of Adar of Joy and Mazal. Candlelight Time in Montreal, 5.29 p.m. Shabbat Shalom.